Girl, we need to speak prior. Father, what is it that you see? I just need to make sure no one can overhear us. Yes, I think, I think I should do quite well. Darn, please, have a seat. Ah. Now, Mary Ann, you have always been most dear. Well, a father's love brings true felicity. <laughs> yes, and, and to prove it fully, you should devote yourself to the tension. Well, that's how my devotion is put to the proof. <laughs> good, good. Now, what do you think of our guest, Tartu? Who, me? Yes, you. Think wiser before you reply. Oh, my. Well, you tell me what to say and I'll comply. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I spoke, you, dog. <laughs> well, uh, tell me that his Mary shines like a gleaming pearl. Uh, that he warms your heart. And that you would rejoice and uh, have him be your husband by my choice, eh? Eh? What's that? <laughs> Please. What? Am I in error? Why? Whom do you wish that I should now swear touches my heart? And who would rejoice me if we joined by your choice in holy matrimony? Well, well uh, top two. Father, that's out of the question, I assure you. But, but my dear, I wish it to be true, and it should be enough that I've chosen it for you. But, Father, would you really ask that of me? Yes, I, I intend, you see, to unite in marriage talk to, to our family. He will be your husband, and I do declare it. Doreen, where did you come from? You must be eating up with curiosity. Eavesdrop on my daughter and me. <laughs> sir, sir. <laughs> I don't know whether the rumor out here is sly conjecture or a wicked smear, but I have just heard word of this marriage. <laughs> I trust it's only verbiage. What? The idea is so very absurd to you. I wouldn't believe you, sir, if you gave your word. I'm only telling you what you will soon see. Nonsense. I tell you, girl, it will surely be. Go on, don't believe him. It's only joking. It's too bizarre. I say. Sir, monsieur, monsieur, monsieur. <laughs> Told you to Val, yeah. I told he's into dice and the drinking. And worse still, he's inclined to free thinking. <laughs> but Tartu, he is on the path to salvation. Huh? That's a treasure past all. All earthly calculation. She will only make him a cuckold, I am sure. Stop interrupting me and remember your place. Don't you dare stick your nose in my pipe. Monsieur, monsieur. Only trying to protect you. If I were in her place, most assuredly, no man would wed me with impunity. I'd prove to him right after the wedding that a wise vengeance lies in the bedding. So you refuse the bait, is that true? What's your beef, sir? I'm not speaking to you. What are you doing? Soliloquizing. <laughs> Don't accept my choice of complete obedience. Definitely. I would thumb my nose at such a silly spouse. No! Oh, don't your man is a pest! What a Ralph Foss is a saint! She's an absolute. 
absolute true uh, so set up. Get it. The torch. You have driven me to swear. I need to get out of here. Get some open air. Oh, Jesus Christ. Have you entirely lost your voice and your heart? Why must I continue to play your part? To think you'd allow such a mad proposal without even voicing a meek refusal. Well, how can I resist such a harsh patriarch? By any means, don't be an easy mark. But how? Tell him that you can't love on command. That you're married for yourself, not by demand. And that if this tartuffe is so charming to him, he can wed him himself if that's his will. And besides, your handsome young Valera wants to tie the knot. Do you really love him, I ask, or not? Oh, Doreen, how can you even ask me such a thing? Can't you see how true our love reigns? You really love him, then? I do with the strongest passion. And he loves you in the same fashion? I think so. And both of you burn equally for this union and marriage? Why, certainly. And all this other man talk too. What is your intention? I would just die before I submit to coercion. Well, fine, I hadn't thought of that recourse. Death would give you such a forcible divorce. <laughs> Good heavens, what a rotten mood you're in. You have no pity for my pain, Doreen. I have no sympathy for foolishness and those who would meet a crisis in such weakness. What do you want me to do? I was born frail. A woman in love needs a heart of steel. But haven't I put the free for my lover whose task it is to win me from my father? What? If your father is a mad fanatic whose love for Tartuffe is completely lunatic, and who's blocked the match you're now bewailing, is your lover to be damned for failing? But am I to reveal how deeply I'm bitten by rejecting Tartuffe like one who's silly and love smitten? Am I to renounce my modesty and duty just because of Valère's strength and beauty? And would you have me show my heart to all? Hmm. No, no. I'm wrong to forestall your marriage to Tartuffe, and my defiance is apparent and barring that alliance. Why, the whole world already crowns him in glory. Both in physique and character, he's laudatory. With red ears and a florid, blushing face. While with him for a mate, you will live in joyful grace. Oh, dear God. What delight you will feel within to know you are wed to a man like him. Please, stop talking and show me the way to avoid this marriage. I will obey. You've said enough. And I am ready to be led. No, a good daughter must obey her dad, even if he wishes her to make love to an ape. What are you doing? <laughs> you are killing me. Come on, help me avoid this catastrophe. <laughs> Just your servant. My dear, dear girl. To punish you, I ought to leave things be. Oh, Doreen, mercy. No. Well, what if I were to declare my love for Valet? Nope, Tartuffe will be your man, that is sure enough. <laughs> oh, Doreen, you know I've always trusted that you would help me. Nope, I am sure that you will be Tartuffe. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Since my fate no longer moves you, henceforth you may leave me alone in blue. From deep sorrow will my heart draw relief, and I know an absolute cure for my grief. Oh, now, now, now. I'm not really angry. Go back to. In spite of everything, I pity you. Well, if I have to be the one that you crucify, you shall see, Doreen, how quickly I shall die. Oh, don't torture yourself. We can easily block them. Hmm. And isn't that your handsome young Valer I see? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, look. Pretty good? Pretty good. All right. <laughs> Gossip sing a little ditty, my dear. Mm. News to me, and it is very pretty. What? They're saying that you're going to marry Tattoo. <laughs> well, uh, my father does have such a plan in view. Your father? Well, let's just say he's altered his inclination, and through him, all this has come to my attention. What? 
No. Seriously. Yes, yes, very seriously. He wants this wedding quite decidedly. Well, how does your heart respond to that plan, madam? Who, oh, me? I don't know. Huh. Well, your response is plain. You don't know. No. No? Well, what do you recommend? Well, huh. I recommend that you accept this honey. You recommend that? Yes. Really? I do. Ah, he is a wonderful choice. Well worth attending to. Very well, sir. That's advice that I accept. Well, I doubt the taking it's causing you any regret. Why, no more regret than giving it causes you. But, but I'm giving it thinking the pleasure with you. No, I'm taking it simply to please you. Let's see what comes of this, fellow. <laughs> That's your love for me. Did you lie to me when you told oh, me that please, you... please, let's not speak of days gone by. You've told me quite plainly that I must embrace as my mate the man that they've chosen for that place. Oh, no, no, no. Now, don't excuse yourself with circumlocution. You've already made your own resolution. Now you've taken this frivolous excuse to justify this lamentable ruse. Quite true and well said. No doubt. And yet... Your soul never lost the love of me at self-control. Perhaps you may as well think so. I may think so. I may, yet, Miss Broken Heart, see she was here something from her girl. And I, I know where this woman more open-hearted. This double cross, it makes her more inclined to recompense my loss. <laughs> <laughs> you to find a new mistress. Well, I'll do my best, but that you can be sure. When one's forgotten, it's hard to endure. So I too am going to struggle to forget, and if I can't, I just fake it. And yet would you have me perpetuate this flame of love I felt of late, and watch you pass in that fat preacher's arms, without let my own heart seek uh, other jobs? No, indeed, I vow I wish the very thing would have happened right now. You do? Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. That's enough insults from you, madam. I will bid you adieu. Very well. I am only taking the path that you chose before. So be it. Did you force me down this avenue? Yes. Fine. I'm doing what you want. Good. I'm leaving forever. <laughs> Not some uh, little jump. I'm going. The sooner the better. <laughs> Very well, man. <clears throat> yeah? yeah? What? I think you... You called? <laughs> Me? No. Very well, Marianne. I'll soon be abroad. Eddie. Bye. I think what chance that you have lost your mind through extravagance. I have only allowed you to go on to see what folly you might spawn. Hey, Valeo! <laughs> you want to read? Come here. Uh, I'm too mad. Go ahead, Dean. Can't you see she wants me to drink this bitter cup? Ah! Come on now, my mind's made up. Ah! Already my presence pains him, and I see that I drive him away. I think it'd be best if I didn't stay. Now, where are you going? Don't we let go. Then return. No, this is none of your concern. I see my presence is causing her pain. So, I think I'm just going to leave again. You are both dunces. She wants nothing more than to be the one woman you adore. He loves you alone and to make you his wife is his only desire, I swear on my life. Now you're both insane. Give your hands to me. Oh, what for? Now yours, don't you see? What's the point in all this, Doreen? Lord, quick, come on. Your love for each other can't be withdrawn. 
All lovers are crazy. It is sad but true. <laughs> Am I right to complain a little bit about you? Tell the truth. You're a little unkind taking such fun and delight in my mind, huh? Well, what about you? Aren't you the bigger ingrate? Wait, 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 wait. Let's wait until later for this debate and try instead to stop this awful marriage. Well, tell us, what can we use for leverage? We will wage warfare on every front. Your father is bluffing. He's playing a stunt. <laughs> but it'd be better for you to seem to sweetly consent to this crazy scheme so that no matter what the future may bring, you can postpone and postpone this wedding. By gaining time, we gain our remedy. Sometimes you'll feign a strange malady whose sudden onset brings some delay. Sometimes an ill omen may cause you dismay. You saw a corpse and never felt queerer. Dreamt of a muddy water, a, a broken mirror. The point of all is that no one, I guess, can force you to marry unless you say yes. But our ship would sail in fair weather if you two were never seen talking together. <laughs> so, go at once and employ each friend to keep him on course toward what we intend. We are going to recruit his brother, and we've already sought help from your stepmother. Hmm. Well, plans are laid. Farewell. Mary, whatever course we pursue, my only hope relies on you. Although I cannot answer for my crazy father, I vow I'll never love another. By you, your love rattle on forever, be off, I say. Mary, before you go, one more What blather? You go off that way and you go the other. Such drama. To marry my sister? Oh, this is love! Tartuffe as my brother? Oh, hell no! <laughs> they bolt of lightning! Strike me dumb! May everybody treat me like a bum if either respect or force can hinder me from blowing my top at this calamity! For heaven's sake, control your displeasure! Your father's merely mentioned this measure. No one does everything that he proposes. How something opens may not be how it closes. I need to stop this vulgar coxcombs plot and with two little words, tell him what's what. <laughs> now why don't you calm down and let your stepmother handle tall truth just as she does your father. In fact, she summoned him just now for your sake in order to learn exactly what's at stake. Find out his true feelings and let him know what really rotten results would flow from any pretensions he has to marry Marianne. Now his manservant says he's praying and that I must tarry. He'll descend after he meditates. So be off now, I beg you, and let me win. I demand to be here the whole time they meet. No, in order for this plan to work, they have to be alone together. I won't even speak! You are kidding yourself. You're so quick to anger, it'll only put us all in danger. Now go. No, I'm gonna watch without getting cross. How tiresome you are. Here he comes, get lost. Laurent, lock up my hair shirt and my scourge and pray for freedom from each carnal urge. If anyone comes calling, say I have gone to share my alms with the poor souls in prison. Such affectation and boastful behavior. What do you wish? To say? Oh, by our savior, please, before you speak, take this handkerchief. Why? Because seeing your bosom causes me grief. <laughs> Through one's eyes, one's soul may be wounded, and then sinful thoughts may grow unattended. Then you are quite ready for temptation, and bare skin makes on you a big impression. I truly don't know why you feel such passion. 
I myself think lust is out of fashion, for I could see you nude from top to toe without your pelt setting my feet below. Put a little modesty in your discourse, or I must have to leave you for force. Oh no, it's I who will leave you in peace, but I'll just say this before I cease. Madam is coming down to visit you, and she has requested the favor of a rendezvous. Yes, most willingly. Didn't he sleep? I'm sure that dog will eat. Huh? Will she soon come? Oh, yes, I think I can hear her just there. Yes, I think I can hear her just there. Oh, yes. Oh. Here she comes. Why, why don't I leave you two completely alone together? May heaven forever in its great bounty grant you good health both in soul and body. I am much obliged for all your pious wishes, but uh, please, let us be seated and make ourselves at ease. Have you quite recovered from your illness? Yes, my headache quickly lost its sharpness. My recent prayers have, in essence, been mainly focused on your convalescence. <laughs> your concern for me is somewhat disquieting. I dearly cherish your precious well-being, and to restore it I would have given my own. Oh, such Christian charity is overblown, but I am much obliged for all your care. I dearly wish to do for you as much as I dare. Uh, I wish to speak of some private business, and I'm glad there's no one to overhear us. I, too, am delighted. Entree new. It is very sweet being one on one with you. In exchange for this unique blessing, I desire to reveal to you my whole soul. And to say that all my preaching about your guests, though perhaps overreaching, was not caused by any anger or hate, but rather by a zeal that's passionate and pure. I wholly understand and declare my belief that you seek only my welfare. Yes, madame, it is true. My devotion is such. Are you hurting me? Passion pushes me too much. I never wanted to hurt you, I swear. Why is your hand there? I'm feeling your dress, such fine dignity. Oh, please let me go. You're tickling me. But lace work nowadays is miraculous. I've, I've never seen anything quite so fine. That's true, but let's speak of this concert of mine. I hear that my husband may be breaking his word and giving you his daughter. What have you heard? Yes, madame, some such words did transpire, but that is not the joy. I oh, I'm sure your thoughts are on salvation and nothing less holds any fascination. Our senses can quite easily be charmed by the perfect earthly works that God has formed. His glory is mirrored in those like you, but in you yourself, we see its rarest hue. And I can't gaze upon you, you perfect creature, without Worshipping in you both God and nature. At first I feared that my secret passion was a tricky trap laid by Satan. But I finally learned, oh beauty most lovable, that my ardor for you could never be culpable. I confess I'm playing an audacious part in revealing to you the gift of my heart. <laughs> Such a declaration is very urbane, but in a man of God, it is a bit profane. I may be holy, but I'm nonetheless male. And when one sees your heavenly charms, it's time enough for reason to throw up its arms. From the first time I set eyes on your supreme splendor, my heart became yours and you my queen. Aren't you afraid that I could be in the mood to tell my husband of your solicitude? And that a sudden knowledge of the sort might set back your hopes for his lasting support. I know that you're only too gracious and you will forgive my audacious deeds since they spring from a human failing in that passionate love that you are bewailing. Others might think differently, I suppose. 
but discretion prevails and I will not expose this matter to my spouse. In exchange, it's true, I do want a small favor from you, to push forward without any sly snare the wedding of Marianne and Valère, to renounce on your own the injust power that would enrich you with another's dower. No! Madam, no! All this must be exposed. By Hadnir, I've heard all he proposed, and God in his goodness has guided me to confound this noisome bastard's treachery, to wake up my father and justly screw this scumbag who wants to make love to you. No, Demas, it is enough that he has striven to reform and merit the pardon I've given. You have your own reasons for acting so, and I have my reasons for my quid pro quo. For too long, that liar has ruled my old man, blocking the love of my sister, Marianne. For this occasion, I thank the good Lord. <laughs> it is far too lucky to be ignored. But David. No, madam, please. I'm going to expose this affair without delay. This is just the thing that will make my day. Oh. to hear the news of what's gone on lately. His love for you has shown its hold through his eagerness to make you a cuckold. I heard him here confess to your bride a love that has made him heart sick and divide. At all costs, she wants to remain discreet, preserve his secret because she's sweet. But I, I cannot bear the man's impudence and think that my silence would cause you offense. Yes, it's true. I would never disturb my husband's rest by reporting the words of a silly pest. Good God! What do I hear? Is this, is this terrible? I'm a sinner, and I see that God has chosen to mortify me with this event. <laughs> Believe what they tell you. Stoke up your wrath and drive me like a, like a felon from your path. Traitor! Uh. You dare, by your duplicity, to take both his virtue and his piety? Father, has, has the false meekness of this Hypocrite! Shut up! Uh, missed it! Oh, you, you were wrong to scold! And, and you'd be wise to believe the story he's told. Yes, my dear son, speak! And don't merely chide. Accuse me of theft, treason, and, and homicide! Brother, that's, that's too much! Oh. Why can't you let go, you, you scoundrel? Uh. Oh, the, have his words seduced you so? Shut up, you bum! Please, I swear if you say one more word, I'll break your arm! Oh, brother, in the name of God, do no harm! You're an ingrate! Father, what you rather is? face a ravening beast than that your dear son should be harmed in the least. On my two knees, brother, I beg you, give him your grace. Oh, don't do this. You're rich! Uh, <laughs> Can't you see his goodness, huh? Where have your motive for this foray? Y'all hate me. Now I see how my wife, my children, my maid, conspire against his life. Uh, but the harder you try to drive him away, the more intent I am to make him stay. And I'll hasten his marriage to Mary Ann, break up the pride of his whole goddamn claim. So you will force her to marry this fella? Yes. This very night. Just to see you, fella. I defy you. I defy you all. Stand here to say that I am the master and you must obey. So listen here, you foul pollution. Get on your knees and beg for absolution. Who, me? Or that villain by whose pretense you think? So you refuse to obey. Is that true? Stick, stick, stop. Don't, don't hold me back. 
Get out of my house! Don't even pack it! Never again let me see your face! I will go. Quickly, leave it!